Good day everyone. I hope everybody is uh, doing well uh, wherever you may uh, be watching from at this time. If you do have your scriptures with you, I would uh, ask if you please turn to the book of Colossians, uh, Colossians chapter 3, and we will drop down to verse uh, number 2 and read that uh, in a moment or so. Uh, but before we do uh, read that verse, let me just uh, remind you what we have been looking at in our series of videos thus far. And it's just basically the, the, the idea or the thought that uh, we can have a sound mind uh, in the midst of, of everything that's going on around us uh, here in Australia. And uh, we've kind of emphasized uh, the coronavirus. And that's the reason why we started these videos is just due to the fact that there were restrictions. There was a lockdown, not able to, to, to meet with you folk and be able to minister the word of God. So, so hence the videos what we've put together. And, you know, it has been a time of fear for, for people around our nation. Uh, but remember when we looked at the verse here in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, uh, the Lord tells us there that he's given us a sound mind. That's, that's a promise that, that he has given to us uh, from the word of God. And we can have that sound mind, the scriptures tell us, by holding fast the form of sound words. And that's what we've, that's what we've done in these videos and in previous messages is uh, I've looked at some sound words. Obviously, the, the whole book is full of sound words, but we've just picked out a, a select few 
and um, have taken the word uh, coronavirus, as you know, and have just uh, equated a, a Bible verse with, with each letter uh, of that uh, word. And in today's message, we're, we're, we're actually up to the, the, the last uh, uh, letter in the word coronavirus, which is the letter S. So it will conclude our, our series that we have been uh, looking at uh, thus far. And that will take us here to Colossians chapter 3 and, and verse number 2. So let's uh, read it. It reads, set your affection on things above, not on things uh, on the earth. So I, I look at this verse and read this verse and think, what, what a great verse for us to, to finish off our series with. You know, it, we, we see in the verse just uh, on face value thus far that uh, Paul, again, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is trying to get the, the church at Colossae, trying to get their, their focus and their attention and their, their hearts and minds and their eyes uh, on where, not on earthly things, but on uh, heavenly things. So I thought this was a great verse for us to finish off our, our series that we have uh, been looking at, like I said, in these videos thus far. So let's get into it straight away. The Apostle Paul says to the church here to set your affection. Now, I like the way in which he, he starts uh, this particular verse off, even more so when it just comes down to the first uh, word in this verse. You know, I looked up in the scriptures the first time the word set, S-E-T, uh, appears in the word of God. And that usually gives us, uh, when you uh, look, run a word in the scriptures in the first mention, it usually gives a, a good uh, understanding or a good uh, definition of that word. And that usually runs throughout the, the rest uh, uh, of the word of God. So the first time that word actually appears is in the book of Genesis, in the creation story, over there in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 17. And let me just read the, the, the verse for you. It reads this. It says, And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light uh, upon the earth. So it's in reference to, to, to the um, sun and the, and the moon. And it says that God set them up there in the firmament uh, of the heaven. So, so God placed the, 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 the sun and the moon in their exact place and in their exact position in which he saw fit for them to be able to, to do what was required. And that was obviously to give light during the day and to give light to, at the night and during the evening time. So keep that thought in mind with the word set and see how, it's, how we can use it in this context here in, in this particular verse. So it says to set your affection. Again, as we've seen in previous uh, verses that we've seen thus far, we see that this is very personal. All right, this is, this is something that... Uh, I need to do myself, um, you can't do for me. And, and likewise, uh, for you folk as well, I can't do this for you, you need to do it for yourself. You know, to set your affection, it's something which is, which is personal, something that we need to do uh, each uh, as an individual. So he uses the word affection here uh, in this verse. And, and again, this, this gives us plenty of uh, ideas uh, when it comes to the word uh, affection, you know, the word affection is used in, in many, um, on many occasions uh, in society today. And many words can be used to, to describe the word affection. You know, it can be your, your desire, uh, your, your devotion, something that you are uh, devoted to. Could be your, your longing, uh, your, your longing desire or something that you, that you love greatly uh, or, or, or deeply. So I like how uh, we see straight away that as the, as the Apostle Paul pens this verse, he, he, he's dealing here uh, with the believer, not with their intellect, not with their head, but uh, the, the driving force behind them, where the emotions come from. And that's obviously, like we said, not with the head, uh, but with the heart. All right. So he says here to, to set your affection on things above, not on things uh, on the earth. So when we think of our uh, affections, where are our affections produced or, or where are they developed? All right, we, we've already said that, and we've said that obviously it comes from, comes from the heart. And this is, uh, like we said, the, the driving force behind us. And what I want to do uh, in this particular video is actually just take the simple word heart and give us a few things to consider that are above and then at the same time to give us some things to consider that, that are uh, on the earth. You know, when we think about the things that, that are on the earth, when it comes to our affections, that's kind of natural for us, isn't it? That's where most of our affections lie when it comes to those things that are on the earth. 
And there's nothing necessarily wrong with some of the things that we'll look at, and maybe there are, there are, there are other things that you can think of uh, as well. But what Paul's trying to get uh, across to, to the church here is that we need to be able to set our affection. We need to put our affection in the right place, in the right position, just like the Lord did there in the book of Genesis with the sun and with the moon so that they would have their desired effect. Likewise, we need to set our affections in the right place so that they too have the desired effect in our Christian lives. So some of these things that, that can be on the earth where our affection may lie uh, can include our health. You know, for the letter H in heart can be our, our health. But, uh, you know, we need to realize that, you know, our, our health is not going to last forever. Uh, some of you folk are obviously a lot, a lot, lot older in age, and there are some things that you, you, you can't do now uh, that you were able to do uh, many years ago, or whatever it may be. And you'll see a common, common thought uh, in all these things that we'll look at, and that common thought is basically that uh, all these things can be taken away, some of them at an instant, they can be taken away. Not at the same, not just taken away at an instant, but can be gradually taken away um, to the point where they'll eventually be taken away. And at the same time, we'll notice that these things will not always last forever. And what a great example is our health. You know, our health is not always going to be uh, as great as it was maybe uh, 10, uh, 20 years ago, or whatever it may be. And for letter E, uh, what about uh, entertainment? You know, Entertainment is, is well. We've seen it was taken away during uh, the restrictions and lockdown, wasn't it? Think about um, um, sport, for instance. Right, sport here in our country has only um, started up again over the past uh, couple of weeks or so. Right, but there was a period of time there where it was just where it was taken away. All sports ceased, and that's a great form of entertainment in, in, in our country. And um, you, you know, you, you think about that. If there were many that set their affection on, on uh, entertainment, particularly sport, for example, and it was taken away just like that, just in a moment, just in an instant. And, and Paul's telling us here, he said, "Look, we shouldn't set our affection on things above." I mean, he says we should set our affection on things above. Sorry, not on things on the earth, because, like I said, we'll see in these examples that these things can be taken away just like that. Our affection shouldn't be on these things, not just uh, health or entertainment, but what about um, our ability? You know, the same sort of thought when it comes with, with, our, with our health as well. Maybe some of the things that we, can, we, we used to be able to do before, we, we can't do now. You know, we don't have the ability to be able to do some of those things. You know, even, um, a, again, let me just u use an example for some of you older folk. Maybe you're not able to get out and about like you used to because of this uh, coronavirus. You've been, it's been recommended to you to, to, to stay indoors. Uh, and maybe some of you um, are not able to just take something simple like, like drive anymore, have that ability to be able to drive, you know, because uh, again, because of age or maybe it's a, so, so, some other issue. But I just wanted to see some of the, 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 these ideas or these thoughts that this is why Paul's telling us we should not be setting our affection on things on the earth because all these things uh, will not last forever. All these things will eventually uh, be taken away from us. Um, not just ability, but for the letter R, what about our riches? You know, there's nothing wrong with having riches. Don't get me wrong. You know, the scriptures tell us the love of money is the root of all evil. The love, not money in and of itself. But you think about riches in and of themselves at, at the same time. You know, they can be here at a moment and then they can be taken away uh, just like that. So we shouldn't set our affection on, on, on riches either. And then the letter T, I use the word territory. You know, at the same time. Uh, when I talk about territory, I'm talking about our homes or, or our lands, uh, the, 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 those things in which uh, obviously uh, we possess, where we uh, uh, reside. You know, we shouldn't set our affection on those things because, again, it has the same thought that uh, they will not last forever. And uh, one day we will, we will die and uh, if we're saved, we'll, we'll be with the Lord and then they'll go to someone else and, and then someone else and then so forth and, and so forth. They'll eventually be taken away. So that's why Paul's telling the church here, he says, look, not to set your affection on those things that are on the earth because all these things have these two thoughts in common. Firstly, they can be taken away just like that. 
And then secondly, they're not going to last forever. And we've seen that, haven't we? In the midst of this coronavirus, we've seen that uh, uh, health, entertainment, our ability, our riches, our territory can, can be um, taken away. It can be ceased for a short time. So why are we pouring our affection? Why is our affection on those things that, that are on the earth that are temporal, that are not going to last forever? That's why he starts off this verse by telling us to set. He's telling us that's something that we need to do because it's natural for us to set our affection on things on the earth, but we need to set our affection. What does he say? Set your affection on things above. Something that we need to do in and of ourselves. So let's have a look at some things here in the scriptures that are above that we ought to set our affection upon. Now, firstly, let's take the letter H again. We're going to use the word heart because obviously that's where our affections are developed. That's where our affections come from, from our hearts. So one thing that we'll start off with, set your affection on things above the letter H. What's one thing that's above beginning with H? You know, this one's an obvious one for us. Uh, heaven. All right. So we ought to set our affection on heaven. Now let's go, let's look at a couple of scriptures here. Keep your finger there in Colossians. Second Corinthians, and let's go to uh, chapter number 12. Now, there's not much mentioned uh, in the scriptures uh, concerning heaven. You know, uh, the Lord doesn't go into um, as much detail uh, in the word of God when it comes to, to what heaven is like. You know, obviously, many people have, have many thoughts, many ideas of what heaven is. You know, there, there's some foolish thoughts out there that all it is is you're sitting up on a cloud playing a harp all right and well i don't know where they get that foolish idea from that's not found in the word of god uh, anywhere but there's not a lot of detail of exactly what heaven is like what it's we know who's going to be there uh, but the surroundings and something or well, maybe it's going to be like the garden of eden before um, uh, sin came uh, into the earth um, who knows okay so like i said i'm just going to give you a couple of um, references here. We'll just read a couple of uh, passages, and let's just take the Apostle Paul for example. All right, look what look what he says here in Second Corinthians chapter twelve and verse number one. He says, "It's it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord." So he's going to give a bit of a personal testimony in these next couple of verses to what happened to him. He says, "I knew a man in Christ above fourteen years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell." or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. So the Apostle Paul, from his own words here, from his testimony, saying that he was caught up into the third heaven. You know, we're talking about setting our affection on things above. Obviously, heaven uh, is, is above. All right, so look what he says here when he begins to describe what he saw up there. Verse 3, it says, And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Verse number 4, it says, How that he was caught up into paradise, which is the third heaven of verse number 2, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. And then Paul ends that testimony. He, he, he doesn't write here in the passage those things that uh, he, he, he heard, all those things that he, he, he saw, uh, what was going on up there in heaven, what was uh, taking place or, or anything like that. It, it, it's a mystery. You know, he said it was not lawful for, for, for it says how he was caught up into paradise and heard and speak all it was not lawful for a man to utter. You know, the Lord didn't allow him to write down in the scriptures what it was like uh, up there. It was, it was a, it's, a, it's a mystery in a sense. It gives us anticipation. I wonder what it's like. It should uh, create a, an eagerness in our hearts to, to, to want to uh, be able to go there. You know, one thing we do know, and one thing we are certain of, the, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8, it says to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So we do know, based on what the scriptures tell us, that when we die, yes, our body will go to the grave, but at that moment, as soon as we die, our soul is absent from the body, but it's going to be what? present with the Lord where it's going to be up there uh, in heaven. So from this passage, you know, 
what Paul doesn't tell us exactly what heaven is like. You know, there's so many books and um, um, testimonies out there of people who've said that, yes, they've died, that they've gone to heaven and they've described heaven and described it like this or like that. And, and uh, like I said, making plenty of money on the side with their stories and testimonies and, and whatnot. But can I just draw us back to what Paul has written here in the scriptures? You know, if the Lord didn't allow Paul to, to, to pen down in his word, in the scriptures, what heaven was like, why are we listening or why are we taking heed to, to what the, these other people are, are saying uh, heaven is like because of their so-called personal uh, experience? So I would prefer to take a sure foundation, which is the word of God over what uh, any man says. But at the same time, if you flip back now to Revelation uh, chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, we, we get a little bit here now of, of a glimpse of the throne that's in heaven. And obviously we know who's seated on the throne up there in heaven. But like I said, the Lord gives us little bits here and there in his word. And I think it is, it, it creates great anticipation for us, uh, 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 an eagerness, uh, a desire uh, to want to want to be there uh, with our Savior. So in Revelation chapter, chapter 4, let's read... Uh, the first six verses here and let's look at uh, this description that the apostle john gives when it comes uh, to the throne up there in heaven it says after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and i will show thee things which must be hereafter and immediately i was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So Apostle John here is about to describe exactly what he saw uh, in the Spirit. It says there in verse number 2. And it says that the thing that he saw here was, was a throne that was set uh, in heaven. There's that word that pops up again, set, S-E-T. Uh, and it says the, the one that sat uh, upon the throne as well. So we get a bit of a glimpse here of what the throne is like up there in heaven. So let's let the Scriptures speak for us now. Verse number three, it says, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight, like unto an emerald. And all we can say firstly about this throne in heaven, say it's precious. Look at the, the precious uh, stones that uh, are, are up there uh, around, this, uh, around this throne. You know, verse number four, it says, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So we saw there in verse number three, it's precious. It's precious here in verse number four as well with the, with the crowns of gold and, you know, pure gold up there, not gold that has impurities like it does down here. But notice that the white raiment that these... Uh, uh, elders uh, have on we notice that it's a pure place now around the throne it's precious it, it's pure verses 5 and 6 it says and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind we see here in these verses that this throne up there in heaven, not only is it precious, not only is it pure, but it's, it's powerful. It's a powerful place with that description that we read there in verses 5 and 6. And if you drop down to the end of the chapter there in verse number 10, it says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We get a bit of a glimpse of this throne up there in heaven, that not only is it precious, not only is it pure, not only is it powerful, but it's a place of praise as well, this praise taking place for our Saviour, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So go back there to Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 2, when the Apostle Paul says to set your affection on things above, taking the word heart and the first uh, letter there in the word heart, what's above? Heaven is above. We ought to place our, our, set our affection on, on heaven, knowing that one day those of us who are saved, that is going to be our, our home uh, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know, always present uh, with our Saviour, 
uh, up there in heaven. So is our affection up there in heaven or is it down here on the earth? So that's for the letter H, heaven. Let's take the letter E now and uh, let's talk about the, uh, the eternal Savior. You know, the eternal Savior is up above. Look at Colossians 3, look at verse number 1. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. You know, what else is above? Well, the eternal Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when we, when we live down here on this earth, you know, what is our, uh, we walk by faith, the scriptures tell us. You know, our, 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 our walk is a walk of faith, not, not a walk uh, of sight. You know, we're, we're down here and obviously we, we, we preach about the eternal Savior. We, we preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. We preach about his, his works there uh, in the Gospels. We preach about his, his coming again. Uh, we, we, we talk to people about Jesus. We, we witness to people, fa family or friends or, or, or those uh, folk that's uh, on the streets or whatever it may be. We, we talk to them about a man in whom we have not seen uh, with our eyes. Not only do we preach about our eternal Savior, we, we pray to our Savior as well. You know, times where we spend time praying. We're praying to, to, to a man in whom we've not seen uh, with our eyes. It's all by faith. And at the same time, we, we praise an eternal Savior. We, we sing. When we sing the great hymns uh, of old, when we, when we sing the scriptures or when we sing the Psalms or, or sing praises or uh, whatever they may be, we, we sing them to our eternal Savior again. We're singing, to, singing them to a man in whom we've not seen uh, with our literal eyes. But can I tell you that one day that will all change? One day uh, we will no longer be, be walking uh, by faith. One day we will see with our very eyes in our glorified bodies the, the, the eternal Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we've preached about, in whom we've, who we've prayed to, and whom we sang, sang, sang praises to. You know, the eternal Savior is uh, up above. Is our affection on our eternal Savior. He says to set your affection on things above. You know, heaven is above. The eternal Savior is above. What else is above? Well, let's take the letter A. And can I say there's an appointment and appointment. Okay, there's an appointment up above. What do I mean by that? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 10 reads this. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There's an appointment for each and every one of us. That's above. What's that? That's the judgment seat of Christ. And the scriptures tell us that we're all going to appear. All of us that are saved, all of us that are, are Christians, all of us that, that are believers. Yes, there is going to be a judgment for each and every one of us. And that is above. And that is something that we ought to be setting our affection upon. You know, something that we ought to be um, thinking upon day by day in the way in which we live our lives down here on this earth. We have an appointment waiting for us up there. It says that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So we have an appointment with the Lord Jesus Christ at his judgments, at the judgment seat of Christ. We will be judged according to, to our works down here, obviously uh, after salvation. And not just our, our works, but, but our walk with our Savior as well. You know, the verses that we've looked at in this entire series have all mainly been uh, focused or directed on, on our walk with Jesus Christ uh, day by day. So can I say that that is something which is above as well? An appointment that's, that's waiting for us, that judgment seat of Christ. He says to set your affection on things above, on heaven on the eternal Savior, on the appointment, and then for the letter R, on rest. You know, one day we're going to have rest. And what do I mean by that? Well, remember back there in the Gospel of John, John chapter 16 and verse number, number 33, the Lord Jesus Christ, they're speaking to his disciples. He said this to them, he says, "'In the world ye shall have tribulation.'" Now, living in this world, you are going to have tribulation. What sort of tribulation? Well, all sorts of tribulation. 
You know, you, you think about your, your own Christian life, and we've talked a lot about it in, in some of these uh, videos that, that we've been uh, looking at uh, uh, with uh, scripture verses and everything. And uh, you can fill in the blank there for what sort of tribulation uh, you've gone through. But it says here, in the world you shall have tribulation, not in heaven. There's not going to be any tribulation up there in heaven, there's not going to be any tribulation up above. You know, think about it for a moment or two. That whatever we may be struggling with down here, whatever battles we may be struggling with, whatever um, buffetings we've received, whatever beatings we may have received, whatever burdens we may be carrying, we're told that we're going to have rest one day. And that rest is up above. Are we setting our affection on that rest that's up there in heaven. You know, it may be struggle down here for you. It may have to do with, with sin. You know, I think that's something which we all struggle with, if we're honest with ourselves, because we all still live in this robe of flesh. This, this flesh is not being redeemed. We do not have a glorified body as of yet. But can I tell you, up there there's going to be rest from sin, because when we have our glorified body, there's going to be no struggle with sin no more. There's going to be complete rest from sin. Maybe not just sin, maybe it's a form of suffering that you may be going through now. Maybe it may be some sorrow. Can I tell you that there's not going to be any suffering up there in heaven? You're going to be at rest from your suffering. You're going to be at rest uh, from your sorrow. You know, the scriptures tell us in the book of Revelation about God wiping away uh, all the tears. You know, maybe you're struggling with some form of sickness down here. Maybe it's um, terminal. Uh, I don't know what it may be for you. But can I tell you that there's no sickness up there in, in, in heaven. There's, there's rest up there from all forms uh, uh, of sickness. Maybe it's not sickness. Maybe it's, it's separation. Uh, maybe it's a situation. Uh, whatever it may be. Maybe it's a storm uh, that you're going through at this present time. You will have rest from, from all those situations, all those circumstances, whatever they may be once you're up there in heaven. You know, he tells us to set your affection on things above. That's something that's up there above, rest. Now you may say, well, I can have rest down here. Yes, we can. We can have rest down here. Uh, and the Lord can give us rest in the midst of those situations, circumstances, whatever they may be. But can I tell you, it's a constant struggle, isn't it though? Because the Lord promises us that rest and he, pro and he promises us that he cares for us when we cast our care upon him. We've seen that and everything. But if you're like me, you, you, you find yourselves just uh, losing that rest and that peace that the Lord promises us because we go back to just trying to do things in our own strength and our own ways. And, and then we come back to where we ought to be and then we'll take a couple steps back and then a couple steps forward. We'll fall down. We get back up again. You know, there's none of that up there. It's perfect, complete rest. From all those things and then lastly the letter T in the word heart we've seen that uh, set your affection on on things above we've seen that that heaven is above we ought to set our affection on heaven we ought to set our affection on the eternal Savior obviously the Lord Jesus Christ we ought to set our affection on the uh, appointments you know the the judgment seat of Christ you know uh, well, I like what one man said he, he made this statement. he said we ought to make every decision in light of the judgment seat of Christ. So every decision that we make here on this earth, we need to have not on the not in the, the back thought of our mind, but in the forefront of our mind, how is this going to pan out? How is this going to affect me at the judgment seat of Christ? Now if our affection is on that appointment, we it's going to cause us to live differently. It's going to cause us to behave, to, to act differently down here in the way we make decisions and the way we live our Christian lives. Uh, set your affection on things above. We have rest that's up above as well. And then lastly, for the letter T, we'll have togetherness up there. And that's something that we ought to set our affection upon as well. What do I mean by togetherness? Well, if you want to flip over a couple of uh, pages and go to the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 4 and uh, look at verse number 13. Paul says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that, that have died in the Lord. And it says this, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So here's a promise in verse 14. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died 
and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You know, there's going to be great togetherness up there uh, in heaven. And that's something where we ought to set our affection towards that togetherness, the togetherness with, 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 with friends or with family that, that, are, that are saved and that are with the Lord now. You know, think about the great reunion that's going to take place. Have you lost family members or friends or, or, or loved ones or whoever it may be, knowing that, knowing that they're saved and, yes, you, you don't see them now, but one day up there in glory there's going to be a great reunion. There's going to be a great togetherness and being able to, to, to be with those departed saints so once again. You now I've lost members of, of, of my family uh, overseas and uh, uh, <clears throat> some members of, of, of the family in which I um, didn't get to know too well because I was too young but but one day there's going to be a, that that reunion and that that great fellowship and, and togetherness uh, with those uh, family members and, and, and even friends that, that that have passed as well so when we think about this this, this idea Paul's turn to set your affection on things above you know, there's going to be great togetherness above. Is our affection on that uh, togetherness? Now, he says to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And we'll get to the reason for that uh, in a moment or two. But can I just uh, say, as we've taken the word uh, heart and uh, looked at some of these things that are above, because obviously that's where our affections uh, come from, Notice the, the particular order that we've seen um, as the Lord's directed us uh, in this message. You know, we shouldn't be seeking those things that are above that um, cause us to basically escape everything down here. You know, we have to have our affection and our desires in the right place and in the right order. And that's why we said, firstly, heaven, because that's the perfect, pure place that uh, we're longing. That's our, that's our, that's our home. You know, we're just a passing through down here. Firstly, heaven. Secondly, what makes heaven? Well, it's the eternal Savior. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. We're, we're, uh, we're no longer walking by faith, but our faith will then be turned to sight. And then, obviously, that appointment there at the judgment seat of Christ, that's what we're living for down here in trying to prepare ourselves for that judgment, for the judgment seat of Christ. And then there's that blessedness that comes after that. You know, heaven, obviously, the eternal Savior, the appointment, there's that rest from all the sin, the suffering, the sorrow, the sickness, the separation, the storm, and then that great togetherness that we can experience with, with family and friends uh, that have passed on. But Paul says here to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So why does he tell us here in this verse to set our affection on those things above, not on things on the earth? Well, we've already answered that question. We've already seen it in what we've seen thus far. But Paul gives us a Bible reason for that, because in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, he says this, For the things which are seen are temporal. He says the things which we can see are temporals. What does he mean? Well, they're not going to last forever. They're here and they can be taken away just like that. Let's go back to what we looked at at the beginning of the message with the word heart when it came to those temporal things. Our health, entertainment, our ability, our riches, and our territory. You know, all those five things are all temporal. So all those things are here on the earth. That's why he's telling us, to set our affection not on those things that are on the earth. Why? Because the things which are which are seen, those things which are on the earth are temporal. But then he says, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Those things which we cannot see are eternal. Hence why he tells us to set your affection on those things which are above. Set our affection not on those things that are temporal, that are not going to last forever, but those things that are eternal, that will always be forever. And what are those things? Heaven the eternal Saviour, our appointment there at the judgment seat of Christ, rest from all those uh, difficulties down here, which is going to be an eternal rest, you know, not just a temporary rest, an eternal rest and a togetherness, you know, and that togetherness will be eternal as well. There'll be no more separation uh, from, from, from loved ones, whether it be family or, or friends or, or whoever it may be. 
So how do we know? How do we know if our affection is on things above, on those things we've seen, or on those things that are on the earth? Well, the saying goes, the proof is in the pudding, is it not? Well, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34 says this, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what's coming out of our lips? What's coming out of our lips today? Are we talking about those things that are temporal, you know, our health, entertainments, our ability, our riches, our territory, or, or many other things? Or is what's coming out of our lips today, are we talking about heaven? Are we talking about the eternal saviour? Are we talking about our appointments, at the judgment seat of Christ? Are we talking about the, the rest that's going to be found up there in heaven, the eternal rest? And are we talking about the togetherness, again, which is going to be eternal up there in glory and not the temporal togetherness that we have down here? You know, if, we're, uh, if we have our affection in the right place on those things that are above, you know, we've said and we've seen that that's where uh, the affection comes from our heart and out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaketh, those things will be coming out of the lips. That will be in our communication uh, to others. People will see, well, look, this person's not living for down here. This person's not living for their health or entertainment, for the ability for riches or territory or whatever it may be. There's something different about this person. This person is living for something else. Their affection is somewhere else. Their affection is out of this world. Their affection is on heaven, on the eternal Savior, on their appointment at the judgment seat of Christ, on rest and on uh, togetherness. So what a great verse this is by the Apostle Paul here in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, where he says to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, before we uh, finish off uh, uh, this uh, particular message, um, at the end of the message, we will uh, I'll put a, another song on, spiritual song for you. And this uh, particular song is called uh, I Can Go In. All right, and again, it's a, it's a great song when you when you just listen to, to the words, and I encourage you to, to listen to the words of that song because it, it, it's what it does. It gives us um, a, a not not an idea, but it kind of um, helps us to meditate on, on how wonderful uh, those things which will be up there uh, in heaven uh, when the Lord uh, takes us up there uh, to be with Him, the saints from past. Uh, those saints in the scriptures and like I said you have to listen to the song if you haven't heard that that song before so we'll go to that in a minute or two but uh, just just to finish off now uh, remember what we have uh, been looking at uh, in these videos and uh, like I said we've been looking at it for the last uh, few months or, or so now and just being able to have that uh, that sound mind holding fast the form of, of sound words and particularly, uh, we've, we've put this together in the midst of this uh, coronavirus, all right? And can I just encourage you that it's not just for, for this time. It's not just for the time of this coronavirus. This can, this can apply to us. This can help us uh, in the midst of, of any circumstance, any situation uh, that we may find ourselves in uh, in our Christian lives. You know, the Lord can give us a sound mind, but we need to make sure that we do our part by holding fast the form of their sound words. And let me just remind you what these sound words were. For the letter C in coronavirus, we took 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. For the letter O, we went to Psalm 119 and verse 18, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. For the letter R, we went to Psalm 37 and verse 7, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. The letter O again, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 118, verses 1 and 29. The letter N, now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. The letter A, According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 20. 
The letter V, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. John chapter 12 and verse 24. For the letter I, we went to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 is the letter R. Rejoice in the Lord alway. And again, I say rejoice. For the letter U, Psalm 112 and verse number 4 reads, Unto the upright there ariseth light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. And for the letter S, Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 2, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So I trust that this uh, this uh, little series has been uh, a help to you uh, in, like I said, in the midst of this coronavirus, but don't just uh, apply it during that time. It's something we ought to apply uh, daily uh, in our Christian lives. So look, moving forward, um, I am going to just uh, have a break from doing uh, videos online. Uh, the local church where I uh, attend, I'll be, uh, uh, we have started up again and uh, I'll be ministering uh, over there uh, in coming weeks. So it doesn't mean that I will um, put a stop to all these videos online, just uh, seeking the Lord's direction uh, at this present time. So you pray with me. And uh, at the same time, I desire to be able to, to come out west as soon and try and catch up with, with, with you folk and uh, try and have some fellowship uh, around uh, the Word of God uh, and trust around a, a hot fire in this winter time. Uh, with, a, with a cup of tea and maybe a couple of scones. So I appreciate your support during this time. Uh, God bless you all. And uh, I trust, like I said, to, to see you all soon uh, in due course. God bless.
Magdalene and 